Hi students, today we're going to learn about two chemicals that are very very important you know in any chemistry lab acids and bases. You know these acids and bases are actually very very corrosive substances. We're going to study about the properties of acids and bases in this chapter. Then you know we've seen that acids actually react with bases, metals, carbonates and oxides and they form different compounds and they give out different gases. So what actually happens, you know, when acids and bases react with each other? We're going to study that also in this chapter. So let's start this chapter related to the properties of acids and bases. First of all, let's understand, you know, how compounds are classified. Compounds in general are classified into only and only three categories. Acids, bases and salts. Acids, you know, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid. Bases, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide and salts like say sodium chloride or calcium chloride. We'll discuss in detail about exactly what an acid is, exactly what a base is and exactly what a salt is in the chapters to come. In this chapter however you must accept that acids and bases are certain corrosive substances which have a certain set of properties. We'll just discuss about those properties right now. But exactly what they are, like what's the definition of an acid base and salt, we'll discuss all that in the next chapter. So here, let's have a look at some common acids. These are some common acids. Hydrochloric acid, HCl. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Nitric acid, HNO3. Phosphoric acid, H3PO4. Carbonic acid, H2CO3 and acetic acid CH3COOH. Yes, you must remember the formula of all these acids because they are very very common acids in the laboratory. One interesting fact here is that acetic acid here is basically vinegar. The vinegar we use in you know decorating food substances. That is acetic acid CH3COOH. Carbonic acid is the acid found in Pepsi, Coke and all these carbonated drinks. So some acids are not that corrosive. They're actually weak acids and you can even consume them. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid however are very very corrosive. You have to stay away from them. Let's look at some common bases now. Here. These are the common bases. Potassium hydroxide, KOH. Sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Calcium hydroxide, COH whole twice. Ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH and aluminium hydroxide ALOH whole thrice. These are some common bases. Again, calcium hydroxide is a commonly used substance. Did you know you know that the lime that lime water is basically calcium hydroxide? You know the lime that we use to paint our walls, the walls of our houses, that is calcium hydroxide. So this is a very interesting phenomenon, isn't it? But this is true. So that was about, you know, the names of common bases. Now before we go on and, you know, study the properties of acids and bases, we'll have to learn about a special term. This term is called indicators. An indicator is a substance which changes color when it is put into an acid or base. So, you know, if in any reaction an acid is formed or a base is formed, we come to know by the means of an indicator. So, you know, the indicator has one color in an acid, it has one color in a base and it has, you know, maybe yet another color in a salt. So, an indicator tells us that, okay, this solution is acidic, this solution is basic. One of the most popular indicators is litmus paper. What does litmus paper do? What colors does it change? Well, there are generally two kinds of litmus paper, red litmus paper and blue litmus paper. Red litmus paper turns from red to blue when it's immersed in a base. Here you see litmus paper turning from red to blue as it is immersed in a base. When blue litmus paper is immersed in an acid, it turns from blue to red. Like this. Here you can see litmus paper turning from blue to red. So litmus paper turns from red to blue in a base and blue to red in an acid. You can remember this by you know remembering the fact that base starts with B and blue also starts with B. So bases turn red litmus paper to blue 
because bases start with B and blue starts with B. And then of course, the opposite is true for acids. Acids turn blue litmus paper red. Understood? So this is about litmus paper. You must remember, you know, which solution turns which litmus paper to what color. Red litmus paper is turned blue by a base. Blue litmus paper is turned red by an acid. Here we go. Another common indicator is methyl orange. Methyl orange is actually orange in color in neutral solutions. When one drop of methyl orange is added to an acid, the solution turns red. On the other hand, when one drop of methyl orange is added to a base, the solution turns yellow. So methyl orange turns yellow in bases and it turns red in acids. So therefore, this is again a very important indicator. Understood? And you know when it's not in an acid or in a base, it's orange in color. Yet another famous indicator is phenophthalene. Phenophthalene is normally colorless in color. Here you go. You can see a colorless drop of phenophthalene. When dropped in an acid, phenophthalene does not change in color. It remains colorless. But when phenophthalene is added to a base, it turns pink. So the important point here is that phenophthalene is colorless in an acid, but it's pink in a base. These are the three famous indicators. Litmus, methyl orange and phenophthalene. And you must remember what colors they have in acids and bases. Litmus paper, red to blue in a base. In an acid, litmus paper turns from blue to red. Methyl orange is yellow in a base, but it is red in an acid. Phenophthalene is colorless in an acid, but it is pink in a base. So these are the important indicators. Now that we've learnt about the indicators, Let's move on and learn about the properties of acids and bases. One common property of acids is that acids are sour. You've already noticed that, haven't you? This is because lemons contain citric acid and acids are sour, just as lemons are sour. Of course, you cannot taste all acids to, you know, find out that they are sour because you cannot taste hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. They are so strong that they will burn the tongue. But you must remember this property. Bases on the other hand are bitter. Caustic soda, which is used to you know clean various substances, is basically bitter. Again, in general we don't taste bases because they are very very corrosive. However, you know if sometimes you must have tasted a bit of soap, you know the soap you take a bath with, you must have noticed that it is very bitter in taste. Now that is because soap actually contain bases and bases are bitter. So that is why a soap is bitter. Bases are also soapy and slippery. As I said, soap has bases. You know, there's this property of soap to slip through your hands and feel, you know, slimy, slimy and slippery. That's how all bases feel. Potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide feel that way. Acids, however, are not soapy and slippery at all. They feel like ordinary liquids, say water. Water isn't soapy. That's how acids feel. Another interesting property of acids and bases is that they conduct electricity. In this picture you can see that you know when a battery is connected through an acid solution, the bulb lights up. That is because you know acids and bases are electrolyte, they conduct electricity. So these were the main properties of acids and bases. Let's now move on to some chemical properties. How do acids and bases react with metals? This is the reaction of acids and metals. When an acid combines with a metal, it forms a salt and it evolves hydrogen gas. Now this is a very important reaction. Of course you must remember it. Metal plus acid gives salt plus hydrogen. Let's take an example. Zinc is a metal, right? And sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Zn plus H2SO4 gives ZnSO4 plus H2. As you can see, hydrogen gas is evolved and then ZnSO4 is the salt that is formed. So you know, when you remove hydrogen from the acid, what is left reacts with the metal to form the salt. Understood? So for example, when you remove H2 here, SO4 2 minus reacts with Zn to form ZnSO4. So here, in our top coaching laboratory, 
we have a conical flask and as you can see it's currently empty now let me add some zinc to the conical flask this small black portion that you see is zinc now let me add some H2SO4 to the conical flask zinc is a metal and H2SO4 is an acid now as you can see bubbles of hydrogen are forming as soon as I've added zinc to H2SO4 isn't it we can verify that these are bubbles of hydrogen by bringing a splinter here did you hear the pop sound this pop sound is heard whenever hydrogen is formed this is because hydrogen burns with a pop sound as you can see when I brought a splinter near the hydrogen gas being evolved from this reaction between zinc and sulfuric acid a pop sound was evolved when I brought a splinter near hydrogen understood so that was the reaction between a metal and an acid zinc and sulfuric acid one important thing that you must remember here is that a pop sound is always heard when hydrogen burns and in fact if a gas burns with a pop sound it has to be hydrogen so this is even a test for hydrogen let's now move on and study yet another reaction which involves a metal and an acid